Hello. Last time I was here, I was talking about the Baphomet campaign. In recent years, I've been talking more about the uh, legitimacy of non-theistic religion, some of the other campaigns we're doing. So, and it feels like kind of a squandered opportunity to talk about something everybody's kind of heard before. But if you had seen me the last time, this is kind of an update on the, on the Baphomet Monument case, which has progressed quite a bit. We're about to press a lawsuit in uh, Arkansas. But I would encourage you to look at our website and look at the various campaigns we look at, and look at grayfaction.org to see our activism uh, behind mental health reform. But to uh, jump right in, in Arkansas in 2015, they passed a Ten Commandments bill which allowed for the placement of a Ten Commandments monument on state capital grounds. Uh, the justifications they gave were that the Ten Commandments is, is in the Bible and, and uh, is, uh, was really a precursor to the American Constitution. This was where uh, we derived our, our laws from and, and that uh, this monument was really a, a secular monument. It was a historical monument that was uh, giving, paying respect to the uh, early codification of law. Um, I could spend the rest of the half hour's time kind of dismantling that argument, but, uh, but I don't think it's really necessary for this audience to point out that uh, the Ten Commandments really have nothing to do with the Constitution, in fact, are counter-constitutional. The uh, Ten Commandments bill was sponsored by Senator Jason Rapert. Um, he's this evangelical theocrat. He's also a pastor. He has a very rich kind of uh, social media life. He, uh, he's anti-abortion, he's anti-gay, he's pro-theocracy. And, and you can see these kind of tweets here. He's, he's an NRA enthusiast. Uh, somebody came up, asked him a question in a parking lot, and I guess he threatened to pull a gun. And he refers to the gay pride parade as an anti-Christian values parade, being held on a Sunday by God to intimidate and mock Christians on their day of worship. We see this all the time, too, whenever we ask to do anything in December, or even if there's an article about us in December, people crying that uh, in this, this, this Christly month. In fact, uh, at least two-thirds of the calendar is blocked out uh, for Christian offense. Uh, Jason Rapert is also a, a co-signer of this Declaration of Dependence Upon God and His Holy Bible. So this gives you kind of an idea of his theocratic persuasion and the theocratic persuasion of other people in public office who also endorse this Declaration of Dependence, which holds these truths to be self-evident, that, uh, that, that the Holy Bible is, is, is really the one, the one true law of the land, and that life begins at conception, marriage is between a man and a woman, uh, and, and that they don't, they don't have to respect same-sex marriage because it's prohibited by Holy Scripture. And, uh, and all that bullshit. <laughs> and you can read the full thing on dependenceongod.com and, and harass them every 4th of July when they, when, they, uh, when they celebrate American independence and remind them that they signed the Declaration of Dependence. Anyways, um, the website for Jason Rapert's ministry kind of gives the lie to this idea that there's a secular purpose to the Ten Commandments monument. Um, he's trying to say that this has nothing to do with his religion, and yet he has this website that, that specifically says, uh, and it's underscored on the site itself, it says, Holy Ghost Ministries intends to continue to utilize the media and spread the message of the gospel and influence our nation to honor God through biblical values. And in that, he has a picture of the Arkansas Ten Commandments monument. So, as, as in Oklahoma, um, we, we offered, being that they put forward the same arguments in Oklahoma uh, when they put up a Ten Commandments monument there, we offered to put up a, a monument of our own to uh, test this notion that they had opened the Capitol grounds as a limited public forum for privately donated monuments. That was also part of the argument in, the, in Arkansas that the Ten Commandments was privately donated, so it, it it further wasn't an establishment clause issue because it's not government speech, it's private speech. Um, naturally, we, we, we offer the Baphomet monument and people then try to find ways to, to preference the Ten Commandments over the Baphomet monument and, and reject the Baphomet monument. And in this case, uh, they claimed that the Ten Commandments bill had legislative approval and that the Baphomet monument itself needed legislative approval before going up. 
which we don't think is accurate because that's just another bureaucratic process by which you allow the government to decide which religious voices or, or which, which speech in a limited public forum outside of the parameters on, on construction are appropriate for display. Um, and we were willing to fight that. Anyways, in Oklahoma, what ended up happening was we offered the Baphomet Monument and uh, it caused a great deal of controversy, of course. They didn't deliberate at all on our, on our request, but uh, it went to the Oklahoma Supreme Court as a, as, a, as a type of state establishment clause issue. There is a provision in the Constitution of Oklahoma that said that no man shall be compelled directly or indirectly to, uh, uh, to endorse a religious point of view. And it really hinged on that word indirectly that uh, caused the, this, the Supreme Court, the Oklahoma Supreme Court, to say that due to the Oklahoma State Constitution, uh, the Ten Commandments monument needed to come down, which caused for some of the better, funnier media we've ever received, including making Glenn Beck cry, which I, I will never really get enough of. <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> 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 now the video's got audio. <laughs> Do you want me to check the cables? Hold the mic sure. up the computer speakers. <laughs> It's not coming out of the computer speakers either. Yeah, but I wasn't hearing it out of the computer. Let's see. Oops. I got nothing. <laughs> well, imagine this amazing kind of uh, bitching by Glenn Beck in any case. <laughs> couldn't accept this, so they, they actually put to a vote to take out the church-state separation provision. Uh, they put it to the ballot, and, and that actually didn't work. Uh, the people didn't vote for it. And then they, recently, they tried again putting forward a historical monuments bill that didn't, direct, that didn't uh, address any of, the, any of the findings of the Oklahoma Supreme Court, but it was another attempt to try to put up the Ten Commandments monument. And it said specifically, and, and I feel this was also a way to try to keep Baphomet out, that the Capitol grounds could put up historical monuments uh, based upon historical documents, including the Ten Commandments, the Magna Carta, and the Declaration of Independence. And I think those were the only ones. 
So I was talking to our lawyer and I was thinking, well, what, what would we do in this case? What kind of historical document could we put forward uh, that they wouldn't reject and say that wasn't, wasn't within the purview of what they felt were important, critical American documents? And, and were we willing to make that kind of fight? And then uh, in its simplicity, it struck me, I think, the perfect solution. Uh, then I thought, what we should do is we should put forward a, a Magna Carta monument. There and, is a stack. Sorry. And, and here was my artistic rendering of what would be the front of the Magna Carta <laughs> monument. It would just be a slab and the Magna Carta would be printed on it. The back of the Magna Carta monument would look like this. <laughs> However, Oklahoma didn't go forward with this proposition. I think whoever was in their legal counsel probably told them that uh, the Ten Commandments would come down again because it didn't address any of the problems there. Anyways, just last week, I, I woke up uh, to texts where people were asking me if I had heard that the Ten Commandments monument in Arkansas had gotten run over um, by some wild fellow, uh, and I, I had no idea what his political persuasion was or if he was claiming he was uh, working on behalf of any of the organizations that had wanted the, the monument to come down or, or at least philosophically aligned with any of those organizations like the Satanic Temple, the ACLU, the Free Thinkers of Arkansas who were all going to press charges against this monument being up. But this was within 24 hours of the monument having been erected and it was within 24 hours of me having stated publicly online that we were going to file a, a lawsuit against the Ten Commandments monument going up. So I was very concerned about the uh, persuasion of the fellow who had hit the Ten Commandments monument, especially given the fact that a Christian had also run over the Ten Commandments monument in Oklahoma, and they immediately took to contextualizing him as a Satanist. And even by the time months later I was on the Megyn Kelly program, the politicians from Oklahoma who were on the segment after me, who wouldn't appear at the same time as me, uh, they were still describing this guy as a Satanist. This is the guy who ran over the Ten Commandments monument. He, uh, on Facebook, identifies as a born-again Christian and a Jesus freak. But it turns out that this is the same guy who ran over the monument in Oklahoma. And when he ran it over in Oklahoma, he gave this kind of bizarre rationale um, that, uh, that, that really didn't cohere into any sense at all. Uh, this time he was saying it had more to do with this kind of uh, church-state separation argument, but he was still very much a Christian. Anyways, he did us the favor of, of filming this and putting it on Facebook Live when he ran it over. So that was that, <laughs> and uh, we thought there, there was no way this time we were going to allow them to, to say that this guy was somehow a Satanist. Um, I guess in Oklahoma, the, the, the tenuous kind of connection they were trying to make there was that he had said the devil had made him do it. Um, but he had also said, uh, according to media, Reed wrote, uh, Michael Tate Reed is his name, he wrote that after a dream in August of 2013, Satan was attacking him. After that point, he claimed that I started to hear my thoughts talk to me in a way I haven't ever experienced. So I once again started to believe what I was seeing and hearing. Um, delusional, schizophrenic, I guess. The voice had told me that if I didn't stop the cars, people would die. The voice told me the cars were all carrying meat that was infected with the spirit of Michael Jackson, and it was a killer virus. <laughs> So, nonetheless, uh, Jason Rapert goes on to do a press conference and he said that it was clearly 
the, the hateful language being put forward by the Satanic Temple, the ACLU, and the Freethinkers of Arkansas that inspired this man to do what he, he did. And when Arkansas Times asked him if it was, when they asked Senator Rapert if it was proper to ascribe any type of, uh, any type of uh, political persuasion to a, a man so mentally ill as Michael Tate Reed, uh, Raper took that opportunity to segue into accusations that I myself am mentally ill and that I'm a criminal as well. I'm not sure exactly how that came together. We were kind of scratching our heads on that. But, but anyways, uh, Raper wasn't the only one to uh, take a little too seriously the claims that uh, Reed was working on, on behalf of some type of, of, of higher calling or, or political conviction. Um, Religion News Service put forward this perplexing article saying, I get why Michael Tate Reed destroyed the Ten Commandments monument. And, it, and when you consider this idea of Michael Jackson and the tainted meat, I, I think, well, really? Worse than that, though, it are some of the moderate reports we get. Um, I mean, I mean this, isn't, this isn't a, a petty little fight to say that you can't have your Ten Commandments monument up just because we don't like you and, 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 and we we, we just don't want to see it or whatever else. I, I think this is, this is a, a vital fight against the encroachment of theocracy and allowing a Ten Commandments monument to go up on capital grounds to the exclusion of other viewpoints in what's supposed to be a, re, uh, a limited public forum would be just a, a terrible precedent and, and would revise our entire understanding of the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. So for that matter, I just can't fucking stand when you get this kind of commentary and op-eds like from this asshole Paul Greenberg, whose final paragraph reads, here's a suggestion about how to handle this case until these parties with strong opinions about it can calm down. Round them up, lock them in a padded cell, and tell them not to come out so they can agree on what to do with the Ten Commandments versus we the people. But please, leave the rest of us out of their quarrel. The news is dismaying enough as it is. The only conclusion wordsmiths at Arkansas's newspaper can offer today is, words fail. Well, obviously any perspective and, and ideas of what to write had failed, and that, that was the problem with the words. But this idea that this is altogether too much to even read about in the news and leave the rest of us out of it is, is a, a bit too pathetic. Anyways, uh, Raper began uh, crowdfunding. He, he really. Uh, he really segued this into a, a great fundraising opportunity once the monument had been run over. And he reopened the $100,000 GoFundMe page that had been started for the original Ten Commandments monument that he had put up, which was only valued at $26,000 altogether, including installation. And he soon rounded up enough money for an entirely new monument, even if the first one, for some reason, wasn't insured. Now, the, the thing is, is with all this excess money that's going directly to him in his P.O. box, um, and, and he keeps saying that this comes at no cost to the taxpayers at all, and, and they, they keep allowing him to get away with saying this uh, on local media reports, even though I've stood at the subcommittee hearings, I've been on some of the, the television shows and, and have tried to correct this. Um, here was an occasion where I, w I asked Rapert if he was willing to pay the litigation fees if, uh, if the Ten Commandments monument is to come down or it is, is to fail. Okay, yes or no, will you pay the, the litigation fees if the state of Arkansas loses? Will, will you personally reimburse the state? That's your question. Well, the bottom line is, is that again, this is a situation where one person is attacking the integrity of 99 legislators in the state of Arkansas that passed Act 1231. And the fact of the matter is, uh, if somebody sues on a frivolous nature, that's their decision. But there is no waste standing up for law for the state of Arkansas. We have multiple monuments. And that's a problem we see in a lot of the cases we do. When we ask to do invocations before city council meetings, we've actually had people in the city council say to the press that it's worth uh, going to trial against us even if they're certain to lose, just to take a kind of principled stance against us. So this is when you have public office holders uh, willing, to, willing to spend everybody else's money because there's, there's no ramifications for them. So I think that's kind of something to keep in mind. if. 
we're trying to consider ways to revise the system. Uh, this should hurt for the people who are instigating these things. Now, 25 grand after, another, after, after money was already raised to put up an entirely new monument, uh, 25 grand was also thrown in by the producers of the film God's Not Dead. And, and I don't know, oh, you're familiar with God's Not Dead. It's this kind of Christian persecution fantasy that, that puts forward this idea that, uh, that Christians are, are besieged on all sides by, by heathens and that their, their rights to religious liberty are, are being, uh, being diminished in, in ways that are absolutely unconscionable. And it's interesting, though, that they would throw in for a monument that's being put up to the exclusion of another monument because it gives, it gives the lie to this idea that they're fighting for religious liberty. And I think we, we expose the hypocrisy in that in, in everything we do. Um, if somebody is really for true religious liberty, they should, uh, they should also be defending the right of the Baphomet Monument to go up as well. Anyways, I wanted to show you my, my favorite scene from God's Not Dead. Uh, this is when the atheist businessman uh, takes his, his girlfriend out to give her some important news. And, and it, it looks like it's a perfect opportunity for him to come to Jesus, but the, uh, the movie surprises you. Well, Chris Dahl, my tape. Yes, Mr. Shutt. I have some news. Me too. Okay, but me first. I've just been named. So that's the atheist businessman. The, the, the whole movie is full of gems like that. I, was, I had tears in my eyes when I was watching this thing. You, you'd think it was satire if, it, if you didn't know any better. It's, it really is worth watching, but please don't pay for it. <laughs> Anyways, we, uh, we held off on, on filing our lawsuit because the Ten Commandments monument is down. Um, we were all set to do that, uh, but we don't want to... It, in, uh, to be clear, the other organizations are withholding on filing their lawsuit until the Ten Commandments monument goes back up as well. Uh, in legal parlance, that would be called the issue of standing. We don't want the case kind of thrown out because it's declared moot because the monument's not standing anymore, only to have the monument go back up thereafter. So it, we, we need to kind of have the monument there, uh, have the people who have standing uh, be reasonably offended by it because they have to see it all the time. Um, and then we'll file the lawsuit. And though the state constitution of Arkansas doesn't have the same terminology as the one in Oklahoma that says nobody shall directly or indirectly have to support a religion, we think the, uh, the, the constitution of Arkansas speaks more directly to our claim and gives us possibly a much stronger case than even the ACLU or the Freethinkers have. In Article 2 in Section 24 it says, all men have a natural and indefensible right to worship Almighty God according to the dictates of their own consciences. No man can of right be compelled to attend, erect, or support any place of worship or to maintain any ministry against his consent. No human authority can in any case or manner whatsoever control or interfere with the right of conscience. And of course, uh, most appropriately to our cause, and no preference shall ever be given by law to any religious establishment, denomination, or mode of worship above any other. And it's really difficult to see how they could uh, work around that in the case against Baphomet. So that's the updates there. I'm looking forward to that lawsuit. Um, I, I think it, it's very difficult for us to not prevail even in a hostile court. Um, also, coming up soon, we're opening up our After School Satan Club curriculum to a volunteer network. It was only something put forward by our local chapters before, which was very limiting. And we had gotten a lot of emails from people who knew that there were good news clubs in their schools and wanted to put forward the curriculum. We're going to be allowing for that this upcoming school year. And we're going to be opening up that curriculum around the same time we're going to be filing a lawsuit 
against one of the uh, school districts that denied our request previously but has a good news club in operation. Um, we've also, of course, as I mentioned, we, we put forward uh, literature in schools where they allow uh, the distribution of Bibles and other things. So if you know of cases like that, reach out to us. We have a billboard up in Texas uh, that advocates for our Protect Children project, which offers an exemption against corporal punishment uh, because we hold to a tenant that the body is inviolable, subject to one's own will alone, and that punitive beatings are, are an affront to our religion. Um, we have lawsuits still in process in Missouri against abortion restrictions. Uh, look at religiousreproductiverights.com. And, and if those lawsuits, if one, really stand to change the entire, uh, the entire church-state dialogue and the, the dialogue regarding abortion and, and religious liberty, um, it's been remarkably undercovered for uh, how important it is, I think. Uh, we put forward invocations at city council meetings, as I've said, and, and this, of course, is going to be a battleground. We're going to have to probably file certain lawsuits there, too, because that's been a, that's been a very, very difficult battleground. A lot, of the, uh, a lot of the city councils don't seem to understand the Greece versus Galloway decision and the fact that it did say that it, it couldn't discriminate against uh, which types of religious voices could offer the invocations in this public forum. And also, as I, I, as I mentioned, uh, our Gray Faction campaign is, is one of the most important things we're doing. So many people have no idea what it is, and we're fighting against uh, the reestablishment of the satanic panic and fighting for mental health care reform to take on conspiracists who hold uh, professional mental health, mental health licensure. So check out grayfaction.org. And, um, and in these ways, you can help join us in the satanic revolution. And, I will be around and you can ask me questions and I think we have time for some Q&A now. Or do we? You do. Five minutes, okay, yeah, go, go. Um, so is the Satanic Temple primarily a reactionary organization against uh, religious oppression by you know, Christian groups or do you guys ever promote Satanism as a, a viable, yeah, and this is the type of issue I was saying that I usually like to talk about now uh, to the exclusion of talking about some of the campaigns you might have already heard about, legitimizing the idea of non-theistic religion and, and Satanism itself. Um, a great book is Children of, of Lucifer. I forget how you're supposed to pronounce the guy's last name who, who wrote it, but I, but I would check it out. It's a, it's, a, it's a good book, and there's another book called The Invention of Satanism that actually starts out talking about the Satanic Temple. But uh, the real satanic Bible would be Milton's Paradise Lost. And, and from there, uh, this kind of romantic literary movement that was non-theistic from its very start that tried to build a new kind of cultural narrative for enlightenment values. And, and I feel that that's, that's very much worth doing. And it, it's something that very much has its own affirmative values. And it's something we fight to kind of promote. So yes, I, I do think it. Uh, uh, a legitimate religious voice with its own affirmative values. Yes. Uh, what sort of things are the local chapters doing? They're doing whatever they want. They're having their orgies. They're, they're beating up on each other in a consensual way, of course. <laughs> and they're lighting stuff on fire a lot. And they, you know, they, they uh, but they, they're also doing things like uh, our Boston chapter put forward this Menstruating for Satan campaign where they were uh, getting tampons for for people who needed them. Or, and we've also had uh, other chapters doing uh, drives for homeless people to get socks and, and I think food or whatever else. But anyways, they're, they're building very, uh, 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 very real community ties. And, and it's, the more time goes on, of course, the more it's going to be very difficult to say that we don't have any of these things that they try to attribute a, a real religion a, as having. Um, despite the fact that we're non-theistic and, and non-superstitious, I, I think the more time goes on, the, 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 the more impossible it comes to make that argument. Now, somebody's going to try it at some point, but, but, I think, uh, but I think we've really established ourselves in a very serious way now.
gain traction or have certain movements. Um, what are some more broader themes that are spread out among all of the chapters? Well, the chapters are in, in fairly good contact with one another through forums online, and, and they've developed a, a tight kind of uh, network. We have our headquarters in Salem, Massachusetts, so we all uh, we all really hold the same same values and ethics and have the same kind of narrative put forward. But there's there's different local problems uh, depending on on who's where. The Los Angeles chapter uh, is is pretty pretty well liberated to do a lot more things of a, of a theatrical nature, whereas you have you know some other chapters in, in areas where it like in Texas where the church state battle is is kind of a daily uphill struggle where uh, you know they, they might have more church state battles to fight so I, I think there's a real kind of consistency in, in the in the thinking but the culture is just kind of different based upon what kind of fights they're fighting locally but it's nice for us to have that network so we have standing locally wherever we go okay it looks like there's time for one more question Oh, you, you mean insofar as the activism is concerned? Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I think anybody who's doing any type of activism should know uh, what, what their legal argument is and what they're trying to change and how they're trying to change it directly. I take issue with a lot of uh, so-called activism, which is complete, only based on uh, raising awareness. The idea of, of raising awareness should, should kind of be a last-ditch effort when there's nothing else you have to do. Um, you shouldn't be running around apologizing for your principles and what you believe or just trying to do damage control on people who are trying to take everything you do out of context and, and, and insult and, and denigrate you as, as something you're not. Um, we're, we're not very much for that, as I was saying yesterday, uh, going on uh, news shows or whatever where they say, well, do you do murder babies and all that kind of thing. I've stopped really addressing those questions and just told and just tell them, you know, our, our beliefs are online. You can look them up, but we don't have to justify ourselves to you at all. We have the law on our side. We could be everything you hate. It's not a matter of getting community approval before we're allowed to be in the in the open forum. You don't want people to misunderstand what it means to have that open forum. It's not uh, so long as we uh, prostrate ourselves before them and. and you know, and give the idea that, that we have the, 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 uh, the moral correctness to go forward. No, they have to realize that it's open to everybody and the government needs to remain neutral. Thank you.